knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom of God have been given to you. But to others it comes by means of parables, so they may look but not see, and listen but not understand. The Son of Man must suffer much and be rejected. He will be put to death, but three days later will be raised to life. Anyone who starts to plow and then keeps looking back is of no use for the kingdom of God. If anyone wants to come with me, he must forget himself. Take up his cross every day and follow me. For whoever would save his own life will lose it. And whoever will lose his life for my sake will save it. What will it profit a man if he gain the whole earth and lose his own soul? If any man is ashamed of me and of my teaching, then the Son of Man will be ashamed of him when he comes in his glory. There is still one more thing you need to do. You must sell all you have and give the money to the poor, and you will have riches in heaven. Then come and follow me. Will any of you come with me? I'll follow you wherever you go. Take no thought in your life for what you should eat. Nor for your body what you shall wear. For life is more than food, and the body more than clothing. Consider the ravens. They neither sow nor reap, have neither storehouse nor barn. Give up all that you have and come follow him. What about the future? Shouldn't we have some cushion, some condition, some something that will not make us utterly, totally, abandonedly dependent on him? You know what faith is? Exactly that total and unqualified abandonment on him. No longer to be connected with an organization. No longer to have a salary. No longer to have a fixed income. No longer to have retirement benefits, no longer to enjoy medical insurance or, re or any such thing. And increasingly and totally and finally and irrevocably to be utterly dependent on Him. Are you coming to that? Maybe the better question is, are you willing so to come? want to clutch and retain what is the foundation of your present security and yet be spiritual and yet speak lofty things and yet talk about the body of Christ and God's kingdom purposes in the earth and you yourself want to have ended that kingdom because you're unwilling basically deeply irrevocably and finally and totally to go sell give come and follow will any of you come with me earthly conditions are opposed to this kind of totality there is still one more thing you need to do the earthly spirit and mind and mentality will cry out fanatic madness going too far if our consciences tell us anything they tell us that it matters eternally what we do with our lives now the eternal issue is before us now the knowledge of the eternal and eternal life has to be effectual now there's an actual place of entry it's called salvation it's waiting for a certain totality from us, which many of us have not yet given. Have you for his sake left all? For the kingdom's sake? Or maybe I better put the question another way. For whose sake have you not left all? For whose sake have you not sold all? Whose sake have you not given all to come and to follow? Houses and brothers and sisters and mothers and children and farms a hundredfold, along with persecutions, not so much from the world, but from other Christians who think you have gone too far. Why do they persecute you? Why do you make them boil? Why do they why do they find something growing in them that is an irritation and vexation with you who are a kingdom person? Because it shames them. Because it's 
scandalizes their present Christianity because it really reveals them what the true commitment to the king is. It shows them that they are yet outside the kingdom. If only you were not there to confront them. If only they could con continue to persuade themselves that they're wholly given to God and look what they're tithing and look what they're donating and, and look how they open their homes to meetings and look how often they attend the youth thing or this, that, or the other. But your total kingdom consecration, the all, the finality, the totality of it, angers and irritates them. And if you have not experienced persecution, it is ipso facto evidence already that you are living beneath the kingdom level. Blessed are you when men hate you and reject you and insult you, and say you are evil, all because of the Son of Man, because a great reward is kept for you in heaven. Be glad when that happens and dance for joy. The Lord came and stood before you tonight. There is still one more thing you need to do. But he knows also to what degree we have partial, withholding, conditional. That we have not come to this absoluteness, to this totality. We cannot bend his rule or his requirement. Salvation requires totality or it cannot be ended. One thing you